Let's uh, look into the word for a minute. Amen. Uh, open your Bibles to the first book in the Bible. The book of Genesis. And the first chapter of the first book. And I'll read a few of these verses. Starting at the first verse. Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the trees yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser right light to rule the night. He made the stars also and set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. Amen. We'll stop there and uh, we're going to pray and we'll read a little more after we pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your awesome, omnipotent power. We thank you for your, your creative power. That you are the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to come to a saving knowledge of you. And Lord, we pray that you would let your word go forth this morning and pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would touch hearts. Lord, you know all the needs of your people. Lord, look on those that need salvation. And I pray, Lord God, that you would touch their heart and draw them unto yourself. Set them free by the power of the name of Jesus. And in his name we pray, amen. And amen, praise the Lord. Amen. Notice it said in, in the, in the uh, I think it's the 16th verse, 
In the 16th verse, he said, it said, he made the stars. You don't, have, you don't hear too many people making reference to that. He made the stars. You don't hear too many people making reference to the fact that he made the universe. Amen. We constantly repeat over and over that he made the world and he made the cattle on a thousand hills and he made the thousand hills and he made the earth and all that in, them, all that in it is. Amen. But he also made, you know, the worlds, the planets. He made the sun, he made the moon, and he made the stars. And according to uh, modern science, amen, when you're talking about stars, you're talking about uh, other galaxies. Amen. God made it all. He did it all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's go over to, um, in, in the same first chapter, and go down to verse 20, 26. Let me pull my Bible over here into the light. We can maybe can get a little bigger light one day. Amen. Uh, let's start at uh, verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and the beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm glad that uh, I'm human. <laughs> Amen. We are, that's, that's, that's a blessing you ought to continually thank God for because you could have been something else. You know, God could have de designated you to be a grasshopper. How would you like that? Amen. Well, you wouldn't know no better. You, you've never been nothing else. You're a grasshopper. Grass, grasshopper probably don't complain as much as humans. Amen. But we should praise God more than all the other creatures. Because God gave us a special place in creation. Amen. We are, we are the apple of his eye. Amen. Uh, we are the crowning achievement of his creation. Amen. Praise God. God said, let us, notice he said us, amen. You know, the Trinity was always there. He's the triune God, amen. Let us make man in our image. Let him be intelligent, amen. Let him be Creative, give him creative skills. Amen. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and every, living, every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God placed man in control of the whole earth and, and all the wild beasts of the of the jungle and of the forest and all the creeping things out in the field and the snakes and, and the lizards and all the different things. And everything, uh, it, it, you know, is subject unto the power of man. Amen. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of the large, ferocious, powerful beasts of the jungle are, have become endangered species because man 
has become their predator. Amen. But God put man in control. Amen. Praise the Lord. And God said, let us make man in our own image. God was also thinking because God, uh, you know, uh, is omniscient. He knows all things. He knows uh, everything from the beginning to the end. Amen. And God knew his own plan. God knew he had planned to inhabit one of these bodies. So, amen. So we are really honored to be among the human race. Amen. And no matter how much we love our little animals and pets. Amen. Amen. God doesn't love them like he loves man. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for making me human. Praise the Lord. One of the distinctions between humans and the lower, the lower forms of life is that man has the capacity to commune with God, to communicate with God. Amen. That's how we got saved. God touched our heart. God spoke to our mind. God opened our eyes. And God te teaches man the things that are pleasing in his sight, how to live a life that's pleasing unto him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And Genesis, the first chapter, is basically saying the same thing. Turn to John, the Gospel of John, the, fir the first chapter. Genesis is basically saying the same thing. Or really, John is saying what Genesis said. Amen? John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word. You notice in, in Genesis, the first chapter, it says, in the beginning God created everything and said, and God made everything by his word. He said, God said, God said, let there be light. I've said many times, you know, God made everything. He made the whole universe in seven days. God doesn't work like we work. We need a tool bag and a tool belt. Amen, brother? <laughs> Amen, but God created everything by the power of his word. He spoke everything into existence. Amen? And that's what the Gospel of John, it continues. Amen, what we read in the first chapter of Genesis. First chapter of John, first verse says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. That's why God said, let us, amen? He said, let us make man. Who was he talking to? Amen. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. Talking about the word. Thank God for the incarnate word, amen. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. Where does life come from? Amen. Jesus is the way, the truth, and what else? He's the life, amen. In him, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Go down to verse 10. It says, he was in the world, and the world was made by him. Amen? Amen. That's why... We are so fearfully and wonderfully made, the human beings. Amen. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, 
and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. And the word was made flesh, verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God, amen, for his awesome creation and the power of his word. Amen. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Amen. Praise God. Jesus is God. I, I thank God for the way my, my very close friend, first friend I ever had, Leon Collins, lived next door to me. Amen. Uh, we grew up together. And uh, we did a lot of wickedness together. Went out into the world together. Amen. And uh, then when I accepted Christ and got saved, amen, I had to let the club member, I mean, the club that I was a member of, I had to let them know that I wouldn't be coming to their club meeting anymore, that I wouldn't be hanging out with them anymore. I let Leon know I can't roll with you no more. I had to cut off from my best friend, lifetime friend, amen, amen. But, but he was affected by what happened to me, the change that came over me. And uh, when I would go and visit him at his house, amen, you know, he would tell me, say, what happened? And I would give that same testimony that you've heard many times, amen. And, uh, you know, uh, I thank God that one day I went by his house and he told me, that he and his next door neighbor were sitting studying the Bible. He had joined uh, Enon Baptist Church. He, was, he joined that church about 20 years ago. And he was a faithful member there. He wasn't saved, but he was a faithful member there. You know, see, with a lot of church folk now, it's just important to be a, a good member, good church member. And everybody don't have to be saved. I wonder about some of these churches that have like 10, 20, 30, 40,000 people in attendance and do they ask, why, why would they assume that everybody in the building is saved? Amen. Why don't they take the time? You've got 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 people in the building. There might be one or two people that are not saved. So why not give a clear invitation? Amen. You know, you don't see those altar calls like you used to see in, in the days of Billy Graham. Billy Graham would have them come in the stadium. He said, make your way down to this altar. He knew it took a lot of time for them people. But what, what he knew was that if a person has been affected by the word of God and they, they want to come and give their heart to Jesus, coming down from the, the upper level, coming down the steps and through the corridor and whatever they had to do to get to that altar, they would come to that altar. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you extend the in invitation, amen, only those who have been touched by God are going to respond. And if they respond, amen, they're going to come, amen, they'll come crying. They'll come, some won't be crying, amen. But it's not about your outward expression, amen, but it's about the in inward transformation, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God, amen for this blessed salvation. I love that verse. I always use that often, you know, when uh, the Lord has allowed me to, to be an instrument to lead a soul to Christ. I always refer to this first chapter of John. Amen. Of course, everybody likes to go to uh, John 3.16. That's wonderful too. It's all good. Amen. Amen. Uh, but you have to make people understand that you have to receive Christ. Amen. 
that you have to release your faith, reach out and touch the Lord. That's, that's the way the song goes. Reach out and touch the Lord as, as he is passing by. Amen? And if you call on him, you know, when you're in a church service and the Spirit of God is moving, amen, if the Spirit of God moved in the worship service, there ought to be an altar call. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I thank God that, uh, that Bruce's great, that would be his great grandson, his granddaughter's son, who was here on that Sunday. Amen. When, when I said, if any, is there anybody here that wants to be saved? I was looking over this way and he, he raised his hand over here. And I just kept going on and on. And, you know, and people were just jumping, saying, Reverend Thornton, <laughs> he's over there. Praise the Lord. Amen. I thank God that young man got saved because this is a, a difficult time for him. And, you know, the Lord is faithful. He said, call on me in the day of trouble. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I believe God got some good things planned for that young man. Amen. Praise the Lord. But Leon... Uh, he had joined Enon Baptist Church, and I continued to go and visit him on a regular basis. This one day, he let me know he had joined Enon. And then uh, a few years later, I went by, and he said, you know, Rob? He said, uh, me and my next door neighbor have started a Bible study. And by the way, remind me of that point, because I always stray and can't find my way back. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, Leon said, you know, me and my neighbor, we, 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 we had a, a, a Bible study. He said, and, we, and it, it was a first, that he said, we don't understand what it means. He said, but I told my friend, my friend Rob, he's going to come by and he'll explain. He's a minister. He'll explain what it means. So when I went by, he said, he said, tell me, Rob, I want you to tell me. He said, do we have it wrong? He said, but it seems like in John, the first chapter, amen. Praise God, that it was saying that Jesus is God. I said, I said, you, you got it right. He said, he said, yeah, me and my neighbor next door, he said, she's a member of E9 too. He said, we have a Bible study together. And uh, he said, and we just, we were scared to say that. We didn't want to just say that. He, I said, no. I said, I said, that's how people get saved. I said, when they, when they come to realize who Jesus is. Amen? And that he loved us enough, like that song said. I, I couldn't sit still when they were singing that song. Amen? Every time they sing that song, he thought I was to die for. Amen? Hallelujah. He thought I was worth saving. Amen? So he sacrificed his life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen? Praise the Lord. So I told him, and he, he, he went and got his neighbor. The neighbor came over, and I explained to him, I said, I, said, I said, this is the first step towards accepting Christ, you know? So, um, you know, I thank God, you know, for my friend Leon, uh, just through studying the Bible. He, he began to see who Jesus was. Amen. That's what happened to us. Amen. We came to the place where we realized who Jesus was and we realized what he did and why he did it. Amen. And that, that we're eligible. Amen. I thank God that I found out that there's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. On 52nd, I just, I, just, I just said his name. I didn't have nobody there to show me the right way. And, you know, you know God wants you to just, you know, in the sincerity and humility of your heart because you're going to need humility because when you accept Jesus as your Lord and, and Savior, amen, he becomes the Lord of your life and you have to serve him through obedience. And it takes humility to be obedient. Amen? You're talking about sometimes children that are never obedient to the school teacher, never obedient to their parents, amen, never obedient to nobody. Amen. And God is able to convert such a person, a person that never submitted to anything. But you have to humble yourself to get saved. Amen. You have to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord and make him the Lord of your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
It says, he was in the world, verse 10, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own. He was born of the Jewish race. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You were born of God's spirit, and you were birthed into the family of God. Amen. You have been accepted into the beloved family of God. Amen. You're a child of the king now. Amen. Thank the Lord. But to as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become. It takes the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. To convert a sinner and cause him to become a saint. Cause him to become a child of God. Amen. God uh, allowed Jesus to become human, human flesh. Amen. Jesus endured the human experience. And Jesus, when he became 30 years old, he started into a three-year ministry. And during that three years, he, not only did God bless you to be born human and bless you, amen, uh, to be intelligent, uh, but God made it so that you would be able to understand and appreciate and receive the gospel message, amen? And to confirm who Jesus is, when you go around and saying, I am divine, or you go around and say, I am a deity, amen? You can't just say that and just walk away. You know, no, you gotta show me something. You know, you can't make a boast like that if you can't back it up. And Jesus backed it up for three years of open air ministry, preaching to thousands. And Jesus didn't have a, an advanced team to go before him passing out flyers and tracts and pamphlets. Amen. They went by the power of his word. He would preach to the masses and miracles would happen. People would get saved. He performed miracles. You know, there's a verse in, in John 15, 24, where Jesus said, if I had not done among them the things that no man ever did, then they wouldn't even have no sin. In, in other words, if I just went around saying, I'm the son of God, and I can't do nothing. When the blind man comes, say, you know, you say, well, here's, here's five dollars. Amen. Or do you want something to eat? No, when the blind man came, Jesus said, receive your sight. The spoken word, the word, same word that spoke the world into existence. Amen. For three years. You know, uh, many people don't realize that there are, uh, are, are scriptures in the Bible that actually says that when, in the meetings that Jesus had, that's why his meetings were always packed with thousands, thousands. It was always open air because there was no buildings big enough. <laughs> Amen. And they came because of what happened in the last meeting. And the meeting before that. And the meeting before that. In which people were being healed of every form of disease. Amen. Uh, look at Matthew 12, 15. Matthew 12, 15 says, and great multitudes followed him. Great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. That's what the Bible said. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, great multitudes followed him. One scripture says, it names the different municipalities, the different uh, districts that came, and people coming from far and near, amen. But in, in Matthew 12, 15, it says, and great multitudes followed him, 
and he healed them all. Amen. So when you have a meeting of 5,000 people, and let's say 5,000 got saved, but then they go home, the ones that came limping with crutches to the meeting came home without the crutch, came, came say, honey, I'm home. And I got both my arms. Because you know, the Bible says that Jesus healed the maimed. People who were missing body parts, missing limbs. He said, Jesus healed them, and he did it before a large audience. Other people saw. Look, not only did the man who got his arm back get saved, but everybody that saw the man with the one arm get a new arm. Amen. This is the kind of word that was going out all over Judea. Amen. Because God was backing up the claim that Jesus was the Son of God. Amen. God was confirming. That's why Jesus said, if I had not done among them the works or the things that no man has ever done, God parted the waters for Moses and Moses walked through on dry ground. But Moses couldn't walk on water. Amen? Let's look at another scripture. Look, look at uh, Luke. Luke 4, 40. Let's uh, make that, let's go to Luke 6, 19. And that says, And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed what? Healed everybody. Healed, there were many meetings with Jesus and all of Jesus' meetings was jam-packed. Amen. And in many of those meetings, everybody got healed. Amen. That's what the Bible says. In Luke 4, 4, uh, Luke 4 and uh, verse 40, it says, Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hands on every one of them. Wow. Whew. Whew. And healed them. Amen. Yes. Then the Bible says in other cases, it says, virtue went out of his body. Yes. Yes. Amen. And healed them. And on other, other uh, occasions, there would be people that had such a great need and had, had a faith to believe. They had heard what Jesus was doing all over Judea. Amen. And they would force their way through the crowd like the woman with the issue of blood. She forced her way through the, through, through the crowd and she said to herself, if I can get close enough to just touch the hem of his, if I could touch his clothes, if I can get close enough to touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. Amen. And she worked her way through. She elbowed some men and elbowed some women and got up close and grabbed his garment. And when she grabbed his garment, Jesus said, whoa, whoa, somebody touched me. And the disciples said, Lord, the, the, throng, the, the, the masses are thronging thee. Why would you say somebody? Jesus said, no, virtue went out of my body. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's why the Bible says in Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other, 
For there is none other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Amen. It says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. What is it? Acts 10, 16. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. If you're saved today, at some point you called on the name of the Lord. Because there ain't no other way to be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God. Amen. For the power of his word and the power of his name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And what what, what uh, presented the occasion for the apostles to say that was when they went up to the beautiful gate, amen, and it was a man that had been lame for 38 years from his birth. He had no strength in his ankles. He had, he had no, no bones. And he just, his family would come and, leave, and just leave him at the beautiful gate before you go into the temple. Amen. And people would come by and give him alms. He would sit there begging alms. Alms, alms for the poor. Alms for, everybody knew him. Amen. Alms for the poor. Amen. But when Peter and John were on their way to the temple, and they, they, I, I believe they deliberately probably wanted to go by the way where this man always sat. Amen. And the Bible says that when Peter saw him, he fastened his eyes. This was after Jesus had risen from the dead and had empowered the apostles, amen, to go and do the same works that he did. He, he anointed them with the Holy Ghost to go and to do the same works. And so Peter, the Bible says he fastened his eyes on the man, amen. And said, silver and gold have I none. The man was saying, alms for the poor, alms for... And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as we have, give we unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the Bible said, the man leaped up and wanted to go to church with him. You know, the first thing you want to do when you get saved is you want to go to church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This, this man knew, amen, that he had been touched by God. Amen. And everybody that saw him, see, he became a witness. Amen. The Bible says he went with them and he was running and leaping. I guess they had to kind of slow him down. Hold on. Hold on, brother. <laughs> amen. And when, he, when, they got into the, when they got into the synagogue, can you imagine what happened in the synagogue? Amen. They knew who he was. Amen. Praise God. But what happened was, amen, the, the Pharisees and, and the priests became upset because they heard that, they, that this uh, man had been healed and they came to arrest Peter and John, amen, for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and for healing someone in his name. So the scribes and and, and the Pharisees and the high priests, the high priests came because, because the man at the beautiful gate who had been lame all his life, he's now walking and they wanted to investigate. And they came and said, by what authority, by what authority have you done this? And Peter said, by the authority that's in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, does this man stand before you whole? Amen. You would have thought that the Pharisees would all got saved too. But some of them did. Amen. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Joseph of Arimathea, they were not only Pharisees, but they were of the, of the Sanhedrin council. They were leaders of the Pharisees. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. Thank God for those brothers. God used them to make sure that Jesus' body did not see corruption and had to be taken out to the uh, 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 field where they took the bodies of criminals. 
Amen. In Gehenna, or the Valley of Hinnon, where they burn garbage and where they burn the bodies of criminals. That's where Jesus was headed. Amen. But God had two Pharisees who had been secret followers of Jesus. They even protested when the council came together to condemn him. And they said, does, does our law condemn a man before it hear him? Amen. But God used them that after Jesus was crucified, while the disciples were hiding, amen, there were two secret disciples, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. They went to Pilate and they had access to Pilate because they were members of the high Sanhedrin council. Amen. And they said, he's dead now. He can't do you no harm. He, he's not going to break, break anymore. But we want the body. Can we have the body? Amen. Because they wanted to give him a proper burial. And the Bible says they did it because the scripture says his body shall not see corruption. Amen. Praise the Lord. But God, amen, through the ministry of Jesus Christ, through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God confirmed the power of the gospel. And if God could do all those things through the power of the gospel, amen, God can save a sinner. He can convert. He can change the heart, amen, of a man or woman who repents. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm not going to try to go much further, but I would like to give you maybe, maybe one more scripture. Amen. Um, turn to, uh, let me see here. Turn to Colossians. Colossians, the first chapter. I love, I love to, I, I like to read John, the first chapter, then go to Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews, the first chapter. Let's go to Hebrews. Then we'll go to Colossians. And then we'll be finished. Amen. I just love reading it. Just, oh, Lord. Y'all have to wait till I catch up with y'all. Hebrews, the first chapter. It says, it's saying the same thing that John said, the same thing that the first chapter of Genesis said. Amen. So God who at various times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, amen, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. In other words, God has turned everything over to Jesus. Jesus is in control of everything. He's the heir of all things. It's called the eternal kingdom of Jesus Christ. It's not called the eternal kingdom of El Shaddai. Amen. It's the eternal kingdom of Jesus Christ. It's not the eternal kingdom of El Elyon or Elohim. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. God hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. And guess what you are? You are a what? Joint, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. What did Jesus inherit? He has been appointed heir of all things. And we are joint heirs with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We can't fully appreciate it now, but try to appreciate it some. Not, you can't fully appreciate it, amen, but you know, you need to get excited some, somewhat, amen. I mean, you, you've been accepted into the beloved family of the Most High God. You're a joint heir with Jesus Christ. It's worth making a stand for Jesus. So let us therefore press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God that's in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's what behooves us now. Amen. If you're born again Christian, 
press your way. Press your way to the prayer room. I'm talking about the prayer room in your house. Well, what room is that? Whatever one you make and whatever room you're in. Amen. Praise the Lord. Make prayer part of your life because you have a powerful connection. Amen. You need strength, he'll give you strength. You need wisdom, he'll give you wisdom. You need courage, he'll give you courage. Amen. He'll cause you to be steadfast and unmovable. Amen. Praise the Lord. It says, God who at various times and in diverse manners spake in, in times past unto the fathers by the prophets in the Old Testament, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. And look at the next part of that verse. By whom also he made not just earth. It doesn't say earth, does it? It said he made the worlds. That means he made the planets. He made Jupiter, Saturn. He made Mars. He made Venus. Amen? But the earth is the only one that has any life. Amen. And stupid man, because he thinks he's smarter than God, wants to go and start a human habitation module on Mars. They want to go to Mars. We want to start, start uh, uh, having life on Mars. No, no. Only God can put life on a dead planet. Amen. You better take a whole lot of oxygen with you. you better take a whole lot of water with you. Amen. Why would people want to live on a planet that don't have no trees? Why would people want to live on a planet that don't have no ocean? Don't have no sea, don't have no lake, don't have no river, don't have no stream. Amen. Because man is stupid. Amen. That's why so many people reject Christ because of that stupidity called sin. Amen. Let's, let's just, we're going to wrap it up here for a minute. We'll have to continue this next week. Amen. The second verse says, God, who at various times and in divers manners speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. And God anointed those prophets. They had the power of God. They saw miracles. Amen. One or two, uh, I think, Elijah, he raised the dead. Amen. Moses parted the Red Sea. God was working through the prophets in the Old Testament. But it says, he hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. And I love this third verse. Who being the brightness of his glory. It says that Jesus is the brightness of God's glory. Is, is, do, am I interpreting that wrong? Amen. Who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person. Amen. I think it's a scripture over in Philippians, scripture over in Philippians that says that, that uh, Jesus is the express image of the invisible God. He's the image of the invisible God. God the Father is invisible. You, you can't just inhabit the whole universe and be visible. Amen. But God want, wanted people to be able to appreciate him and God took on a human body. Amen. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and uphold, upholding, what, what holds the planets in place? What holds the universe in place? Why is it that the solar system works in synchromatic precision for, for ages? thousands of years the planets never get out of sync they never go off course if they went off course we'd freeze to death or we'd burn to death amen or they would collide with one another amen but it says in verse 3 who being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person and who upholds all things by the word of his power it's the word of God Amen, that causes the earth to
to, to rotate on its axis, amen, and, and, and revolve around the sun, amen, and cause it to, it's the word of God. The word of God keeps the universe in order, amen. Praise the Lord. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, you wanna know what God looks, at, looks like? You'll see, when you see Jesus, amen, that's all you're ever going to see of God. Amen. Upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, amen, if you want to be saved, if you understand you need to be saved, amen, nothing is permanent in this life. Nothing is permanent. One thing is for sure is you're going to die. Amen. You're all going to, and who knows when? You know, it's not just old people that die. Amen. Many young people. It, the streets are so dangerous now, we're all in jeopardy. Amen. But thank God. Amen. You know, when I got saved, I, I, recited, I recited the 23rd Psalm on, to, on 52nd Street. Amen. I think it's the fifth verse. That was the only one. I only knew that one verse. I, could, I couldn't re retain that much because I hadn't been studying the Bible. They gave it to me to read in the second grade. I had to go up in the assembly. They used to have the children, every assembly, School started with the assembly in elementary school. Everybody gathered in the assembly, and we gathered to sing hymns. That shows how far America has just drifted into foolishness and away from God. Amen. But when it was my day to read the scriptures, amen, the teacher would let us know in advance a few days early, Robert Thornton, you're going to read the scriptures tomorrow. She gave me a Bible to take home. She didn't take a chance that I might have a, Bible, have, have a Bible. She gave me a Bible to take home. And I went around the house reading the scriptures over and over until my mother, who my mother worked at night. She had to sleep during the day. So my mother said, all right, that's enough. I got to get me some sleep. Make him shut up down there. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Amen. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And when I got saved on 52nd Street, that, the only part I could remember was, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Amen. And that's a promise that God gave to to David, and David wrote it down, and now we can all claim that for ourselves. Amen. That even when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, sometimes the, 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 the path from church to home, you might wind up going through a dangerous area. Amen. People are being killed in their homes. People are being, being, being killed uh, on the highway. People, Somebody just ride up beside and just shoot people. Amen. We just had it last week. Amen. You're in danger on the highways. Amen. As a child of God, you'll be able to say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And I recited that when I got saved on 52nd Street because I was so excited about this connection with God that I walked in an area that I had been avoiding for quite some time. Because a man that lived there, lived near where I had to walk, had promised to kill me. And so when I realized where I was at, and I started to turn back, I said, no, I, I just accepted Jesus, and God is with me. I don't have to fear nothing no more. And I knew that this, this would be a good test. So I said, uh, I'm not gonna turn back, I'm gonna walk by, if he comes out, you know, God is with me. And I started reciting it as I w continued to walk. I said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Amen. 
praise the Lord. And I thought I saw him. I, the devil tricked my mind, made me, because it was nighttime, and I, I saw shadows moving. I was near his house. I saw so the devil said, he's waiting for you. But when I got up there, it was nothing. And I, I don't know why I said this, because I hadn't been going to a church that did things like this. But I did say this, and God is my witness in heaven that I said it. And y'all gonna think I'm making it up. But when I realized that what I thought was my friend in the shadows, because I was near his house, it turned out it was nothing. It was just a shadow. And I said, Satan, you're a liar. Jesus, am I telling them the truth? I said, Satan is a liar. And all the rest of the way, I said, the devil is a liar. Amen. Amen. I, I, didn't, I wasn't raised in a church where people talk like that. But you know, now I was a born again child of God. God was teaching me my new language. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I didn't drift it all over the place. Amen. Next week we'll get more, uh, more um, you know, together. We'll keep things together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But we want to extend an invitation. Amen. It might be somebody here that's not saved. Amen. It might be somebody here that everybody is, assumes is saved. And you know that everybody, everybody thinks I'm saved, so I don't have to do nothing. I'm a, you know. Have you ever taken the time to ask God to forgive you of your sins? And have you, now you, you probably believe that Jesus is Everything the Bible says he is. You believe that Jesus is Lord. You believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You believe Jesus died on the cross. You can believe all that and not be saved. Amen? Because you have to confess it with your mouth and you have to believe that he rose from the dead. Amen? You have to believe that he died for your sins and that he rose from the dead. And with your mouth, the Bible said, with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. With your mouth you have to say, Lord be merciful to me a sinner, forgive me of my sins. Lord I claim you now as my Lord. I want to live for you, I want to, I want to serve you. Amen. And put it in, all, all in your own words, as long as you are making a positive affirmation of your faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. If there's someone here that you, you never did that. You just said, I'm a nice person, I'm a good person, I believe in doing right. That won't get you saved. Amen. Because the Bible says, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. Amen. Let's all stand on our feet.